Hello, hi, welcome back to the next section of, um, uh, of this chapter. We'll be discussing here the aortic root. So the system we would like to um, uh, describe the aortic root with is the aortic root resembles a, a box which has a roof, a floor, walls and contents. Exactly the same way the, the, the aortic root has sinotubular junction as a roof, the walls are the sinuses, aortic sinuses, the floor is the aortic annulus and the contents are the valve and the valve leaflets uh, attachments. Now, um, we explained before how there is a controversy around the term annulus, how the annulus is not actually a circular structure. Instead, it's a, a crown-shaped structure. The attachments of the aortic leaflets are takes a pattern as C or semilunar kind of uh, pattern, the highest point of which ends with the commissures, which are attached to the sinotubular junction. Three points attached to the sinotubular junction. Hence, the aortic annulus is more of a crown shape or coronet shape, small crown. Um, also, it is of note here how the uh, sinotubular junction is uh, smaller in diameter than the uh, annulus. Um, going back to the aortic uh, annulus, uh, having um, uh, looking like a, a coronet, three semilunar structure, the lowest point of which is at the nadir of the uh, attachment points, and the highest point of which extends upward through the inter leaflet uh, triangles. Um, uh, having said that, these structure, every every structure of the uh, aortic root contributes uh, somehow into the um, function uh, of maintaining the competence of aortic valve, um, and we will explain this now in detail. Um, before we go into that, we need to understand how the valve leaflet divides the aorta and the LVT into two functional physiological uh, sections. One. Above the leaflet is the elastic recoil, the function of which is to receive the blood and allow elastic recoil and then uh, uh, go back into the normal diameter. And then the left ventricular part, which, uh, which is below these uh, cusps, which the function of which is systole and diastole, contract and relax. Two uh, special points or structures uh, occur in here, and exceptions of this occur in here. So as you can see, a semilunar area denoted in green color here is actually a muscular point which is above the valve uh, um, cusp that hemodynamically behaves like a ventricle contracts and relax and then the yellow structure the yellow triangle which is the interleaflet uh, triangle which is again has a, an important um, uh, physiology so explaining them in more uh, details now <coughs> excuse me the green semilunar part is a ventricle that is located at the base or the upper um, above the, the valve leaflet. The value of this is it uh, allows the valve leaflet to take a certain pattern during the cardiac cycle contraction and, and uh, relaxation. So think about it this way. This is the leaflet. The presence of a muscle at this point will enable during the um, um, filling of the ventricle, it will relax in bringing the leaflets together. And then during systole, it will come to, uh, come closer to each other and hence opening the valve. Also, it reduces the distance between the leaflets and hence reducing the amount of distance the leaflets needs to travel, reducing the shearing wear and tear or shearing forces applied on the leaflets. So this is the value of the green um, point. Also, it allows resistance at this point of junction between the LVOT and the aortic uh, valve, uh, aortic, um, aortic wall. Um, which is a point of high stress forces and it allows the to keep the integrity of this junction. Now the yellow triangles or the interleaflet triangles are parts of the aortic wall which are located beneath or underneath the cusps. Uh, why is that important? So think about it that way. These are the seats. If you consider the seats as uh, the 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 uh, valve leaflets, the arms of the seats are what's keeping this the the seats together, regardless the size or redundancy of the back. So consider the back of the seat being a bit more redundant; it will still not bring the seats apart because what's holding them together is the interleaflet triangle. The arms are holding the seats together, not the back. This allows independence to the sinuses, which can then move freely during the cardiac cycle, systole and diastole, without uh, uh, affecting the, the mobility. The, the, the leaflet can then move separate to the sinus, and they are um, operating independently. Also, this explains why 
you can find a patient with an aortic sinus of I don't four, five centimeters, six centimeters with a trivial aortic regurg, provided all other components of the aortic root are intact. Valve integrity, leaflet integrity, the annulus, the sinotubular junction, and yet trivial or no even aortic regurg. This explains why, because the sinus does not directly contribute to the competence of the aortic valve uh, leaflets and co-optation of the aortic valve leaflets. More important is the interleaflet triangle, which are extensions of the fibrous skeleton. It's holding it together. Uh, and some authors even uh, uh, describe it or um, um, uh, um, uh, correlated it to the pillars of a suspension bridge. The suspension uh, cords can move freely, yet the, su the pillars are uh, fixed, and those are what's keeping the bridge uh, upright. Now, uh, this is the uh, explains why in reimplantation aortic root replacement, why the um, um, professor Tyron David has managed to omit the anatomy of the dilated sinuses, yet maintain the uh, competence of the aortic valve replacing the sinus with a straight tube graft um, uh, and still maintaining the aortic uh, valve competence. Of course, the tube graft needs to be bigger and we'll explain why now. But you manage not to create these three physiological sinuses and yet not affect the competence of the valve. Next uh, point is the sinotubular junction. How the sinotubular junction is um, uh, slightly uh, smaller than the aortic uh, root, about 15%. Why is that important? This explains why in uh, patients with um, isolated ascending aorta aneurysm, you can still, uh, um, and they are suffering aortic regurg, you can just merely by replacing the ascending aorta with an interposition graft and resuspending the commissures back to their positions, restoring back the competence of the aortic valve. This is because the sinotubular junction being uh, dilated uh, brings apart the uh, commissures and hence leads to the uh, loss of coaptation. Just merely by replacing it and repositioning the commissures back to their original position, uh, the, the valve returns competent again without replacing the valve. Also, the second point of importance in here, uh, the value of the commissures being attached to the sinotubular junction. So think about it that way. The valve opens like this, allowing the blood to go from the left ventricle to the aorta, but this is not as simple as it looks like the valve actually has another kind of movement the when the blood reaches the sinotubular junction it dilates it and hence brings apart the commissures so the valve opens this way what authors refer to as loss of the parabolic shape of the valve leaflet so parabola or u shape is lost during the systole so what happens is the valve opens this way as well as this way so it opens like this it moves this way this accounts to 15% uh, increase in the uh, orifice or diameter of the uh, blood effective, regard, uh, effective orifice area of the valve and hence allows the unobstructed flow of blood from the left ventricle to aorta. Going back to the aortic sinuses now, what's the value of aortic sinuses? We explained how the annulus, the root, the sinotubular junction, how these contribute to the competence of aortic valve, but we did not explain how the sinuses are functional. Yes, it does not directly contribute to the competence of the valve, but it has different functions, other functions. First function is allowing the leaflet the maximum scope of opening, hence allowing the unobstructed flow of blood. This on the long term reduces the uh, uh, um, afterload and allows the ventricle to remodel and recover. This explains the merits or rationale of remodeling procedure. Why did Professor Yacoub insist on re reinstating or restoring the model, uh, the model of the aortic sinuses? This also explains why Professor uh, Tyron David in reimplantation procedure uses a bigger tube graft than the annular size. Some surgeons use five millimeters bigger, some use seven millimeters bigger to allow potential space for the, hour, uh, for the leaflet. On the long term, it allows the unobstructed flow of blood. Also, it uh, maintains the integrity of the leaflet because otherwise, if the leaflet keeps on hitting against the wall, it will, over the time, uh, lose uh, its integrity and will be um, uh, subject to wear and tear. 
another function of the uh, sinuses include it provides a mobile structure which can move during the cardiac cycle during systole and diastole so the aortic root changes shape during cardiac cycle starting with a funnel cylinder and then reverse funnel why is that important it's like riding a car and then pressing the brakes uh, suddenly whatever is mobile in the car whoever is not fastening the seatbelt will flow first will fl flow out of the car first and this is simply inertia so the sinuses provide the mobile structure which uh, um, um, which transmits the energy of the blood channel blood column traveling uh, out of the left ventricle it carries amount of force pulling force this force needs to be transmitted to a structure the annulus is fixed the leaflets are mobile so they may get damaged and the sinus is mobile so the sinuses allow this energy to be transmitted um, to them and hence protecting the integrity and the long term the leaflet the annulus the sinotubular junction the sinuses move up and down being more mobile being more elastic and reducing the amount of wear and tear and shearing forces on these uh, mobile structures this is in brief uh, explanation of the function of the sinuses how why there are remodeling surgeries reimplantation the merit and rationale we will discuss this in more and more details when we come to aortic surgery now i'll leave you with this mcq question and i hope you enjoyed this section and we'll meet in the next chapter of um, uh, of this uh, topic thank you very much <laughs>